Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, the Russians started using, uh, I would say, less and less technologically advanced weapons against Ukraine. I have here an article where uh, the war zone reports that the Russians started using some missiles, uh, anti-ship missiles, to attack Ukraine, some huge, huge ones that were designed and uh, built in 1960s. Now, you can say, could be at least two main reasons why the Russians do, uh, do this. One, they ran out of the more advanced ones. That's one, could be one. Or the other one, you don't need to use them because those guys are so bad, we can use these uh, garbage uh, ones. That is, for instance, when you fight someone, you don't have to send every your highest the, the best technology over there unless you want to test it i think the russians already had that uh, two years time to do that so then you send something that you know now we're going to use this thing we're going to save those things for uh, worse case scenarios so let me show you this article and the name of the um, soviet era anti-ship missile and i want to show you the speci specifications of those missiles so let's start with the article. The war zone, and it says Russia now using giant Soviet-era ground-launched anti-ship missile to attack Ukraine. This is a huge missile. I will show you pictures with this. A Cold War era supersonic anti-ship missile has apparently been used by Russia for the first time in its war in Ukraine, almost certainly having been repurposed for the bombardment of a land target. Evidence of the huge missile known to NATO as the SSC-1B Sepal having been used in this way points to the fact that Russia is increasingly making use of much older weaponry in this conflict as well as using missiles in roles for which they were not primarily designed. Well, I don't think you can use these ones against uh, a vessel nowadays, a warship, probably because, I don't know, maybe they're slow, easy to uh, intercept. Years before Russia's all-out invasion of Ukraine, pa, 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 the war zone highlighted how this weapon will still, was still in use in Russian-occupied Crimea. Photos showing the wreckage of the missile began to appear on social media yesterday. It was on the 19th of January 2024. Unconfirmed reports suggest that the weapon was brought down by Ukrainian air defenses, although this hasn't been independently verified. I like these guys. So far, they seem balanced. It's also unclear whether and when the missile came down. Also unknown is how the missile was launched. Truck-mounted launchers and a unique bunker system in Crimea, as seen in the video below, are the two options. Um, should we look at it? Uh, let's see, what do we find here? Oh yeah, I saw this one. Uh, maybe you didn't. Bulgarian military. It came from underground. Now that's the freaking missile right there. Bulgarian military, according to them. That's beautiful, unfortunately. This is from the that's not it. That was not. Uh, maybe. No, that's a small one. That's a different kind. Uh, all right, let's go. Because I'm going to show you the missile. It's mounted on right here. This is the missile. I mean, this is. I'm going to make it bigger. As, as, this is a bigger version, I guess. But what do I know? I'm not an expert, expert on that one. What does appear to be certain is this this is an example of the SSC-1B Sepal, a missile not previously known to have been used in a conflict. Apart from its considerable size, 
salient features of the missile include its cigar-shaped body with an engine air, air intake below it and highly swept wings that deploy after launch. Different online sources have identified the missile by its Russian designation, either a P-35, T-35B and 3M-44. So that's where it's right here. And when I access this one right here, I selected that one, it gave me the same thing I had right here. So Cold War history of the missile. The P-35B anti-ship missile began to be fielded for coastal defense in the early 1960s and had a reported effective range of 168 miles. That's a lot. Powered by a turbojet engine plus two solid fuel rocket boosters for launching, the P-35B weighs around 5.6 tons and has a length of approximately 33 feet. That's 10 meters. By the end of 1980s, the P-35B, that's uh, obviously about 31, 32 or something, uh, or it's 11 yards. By the end of 1980s, the P-35B coastal defense missiles were being sus superseded by the 3M44 with a reported effective range of 286 missiles, uh, miles, plus the option of a nuclear payload instead of the standard 2,000 pound conventional warhead. And this is the exact video that we had right here. The, the, the one with the video is the same thing, the same, uh, if you look underneath the concrete, this, this is how it was launched. And here it says a 3M44 missile leaps out of its uh, launch ca canister with the wing still folded, right there. Russian Ministry of Defense screen cap and the Bulgarians took it. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, this is the same picture as the, I'm not going to go on this side, it's the same picture from here, right there. The same picture is featured in this article and underneath is the air intake over there. Or maybe that one looks bigger. Oh yeah, that's the air intake. Like you have a, uh, how do you call it? F-16 underneath, not to the sides like others. And all right, here it is, big, big 10 meter shit. Okay, ship and sub launch versions that they'll tell us, tell us about. This is SSN3 Shadok. This is the one lumped together by the NM. So that is this right here, which is the same thing. Well, I will see the Crimea context already. Oh, this is the same. This is the picture of the video. All right here, there's two people over there. And if you can see them, one, two, for the size. And this looks much, much smaller in the video than here. So you see my cursor, that's how much a person is over there. Uh, this, my cursor is about, I would say, uh, four fifths of the persons featured over there. That's why, so the persons are right there. You don't can't even see them. This is how long, strong is that. But anyway, when the system first went on online in 1957, oh my God, maybe Stalin was still around. But this, this looks like a... Uh, uh, MiG-15, actually. The first, the Soviet first generation Sopka, coastal defense anti-ship. This looked like, if you put the wings, maybe if you look from a different angle and you put a, it looks like a uh, MiG-15, if you remember the ones that uh, fucked those guys up in Korea, if you remember that little incident. When they showed up, these guys were saying, what the hell is this? This is the uh, mobile version. Jesus Christ, look at that, but it's, it's only for with one, it's a big thing, a transporter erector launcher for the Redut coastal defense missile system, phew, look at that, yeah, this is, it's in action, climbs over the Black Sea as the wing deploys, right there, big article, I like this guys, I'm not going to go over the other things is just that the Russians use that because they can. And it's a missile after all, supersonic uh, weapon. It gets the job done if they have about, I don't know, uh, five trillion uh, weapons like those, the war will continue endlessly. I'm just 
exaggerating, but I guarantee you from 1957 or whatever, or 1960s until let's say 1990, they were produced mass production. So, well, we'll see. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.